Hi, I'm continuing the forward for the master key, Charles Hanel. The scientific spirit now dominates every field of effort. Relations of cause and effects are no longer ignored. The discovery of a region of law marked an epoch in human progress and it eliminated the element of uncertainty and caprice in men's lives and substituted law, reason, and certitude. Men now understand that for every result there is an adequate and definite cause, so that when a given result is desired, they seek the condition by which alone this result may be obtained. The basis upon which all law rests was, rests was discovered by inductive reasoning, which consists of comparing a number of separate instances with one another until the common factor which gives rise to them, is, them all is seen. It is this method of study to which the civilized nations owe the greater part of their prosperity and the more valuable part of their knowledge. It has lengthened life, it has mitigated pain, it has spanned rivers, it has brightened the night with the splendor of the day, extended the range of vision, accelerated motion, annihilated distance, facilitated intercourse, and enabled men to descend into the sea and into the air. What wonder then that men soon endeavored the to extend the blessings of this system of study to their method of thinking, so, what, so that when it became plainly evident that certain results followed a particular method of thinking, it only remained to classify these results. This method is scientific. It, it is the only method by which we shall be permitted to retain that degree of liberty and freedom which we have seen, which we have all been accustomed to look upon as, our, as an inalienable right. Because a people is safe at home, and in the world, only if national preparedness means such things as growing surplus of health, accumulated efficiency in public and private business of whatever sort, continuance advance in the science of art and of science and art of acting together, and the increasingly dominant endeavor to make all of these and all other aspects of national development center center and revolve about ascending life single and collective, for which science, art, and ethics furnish guidance and controlling motives. The master key is based on absolute scientific truth and will unfold the possibilities that lie dormant in the individual and teach how they may be brought into powerful action to increase the person's effective capacity, bringing added energy, discernment, vigor, and mental elasticity. The student who gains an understanding of the mental laws which are unfolded will come into the possession of an ability to secure results hitherto undreamed of and which has, re which has rewards hardly to be expressed in words. It explains the correct use of both the receptive and active elements of the mental nature and instructs the, the student in the recognition of opportunity. It strengthens the will and the reasoning powers and teaches the cultivation and best uses of imagination desire, the emotions, and the intuit intuitional faculty. It gives initiative, tenacity of purpose, wisdom of choice, intelligent sympathy, and a thorough enjoyment of life on its higher planes. The Master Key teaches the use of mind power, true mind power, not any of these substitutes and perversions. It has nothing to do with hypnotism, magic, or any of the more or less fascinating deceptions by which many are led to think that something can be had for nothing. The master key cultivates and develops the understanding which will enable you to control the body and thereby, thereby the health. It improves and strengthens the memory. It develops insight, the kind of insight which is so rare, the kind of which is the distinguishing characteristic of every successful businessman, the kind which enables men to see the possibilities as well as the difficulties in every situation, the kind which enables men to discern opportunity close at hand. For thousands fail to see opportunities almost within their grasp while they're industriously working with situations which under no possibility can be made to realize any substantial return. The master key develops mental power, which means that others instinctively recognize that you are a person of force, of character, that they want to do what you want them to do. It means that you attract men and things to you that you are aware of, you are what some people call lucky, that things come your way, that you have come into an understanding of the fundamental laws of nature. 
and have put yourself in harmony with them, and you are in tune with the infinite, that you understand the law of attraction, the natural laws of growth, and the psychological laws of all, on which all advantages in the social and business world rest. Mental power is creative power. It gives you the ability to create your free self. It does not mean the ability to take something away from someone else. Nature never does things that way. Nature makes two blades for grass grow where one grew before, and mind power enables men to do the same. The master key develops insight and sagacity, increased independence, the ability and disposition to be helpful. It destroys tr distrust, depression, fear, melancholia, and every form of lack, limitation, and weakness, including pain and, and disease. It awakens buried talents, supplies initiative, force, energy, vitality. It awakens an appreciation of the beautiful in, the, in art, literature, and science. It's changed the lives of thousands of men and women by substituting definite principles for uncertain and hazy methods and principles for the foundation upon which every system of efficiency must rest. Albert Gary, the chairman of the United States Steel Corporation, said, the services of advisors, instructions, instructors, efficiency experts, and successful management are indispensable to most business enterprises of magnitude. But I deem the recognition and adoption of right principles vastly most, more important. The master, the master Key teaches right principles and suggests methods for making a practical application of the principles. In that, it differs from every other course of study. It teaches that the only possible value which can atta attach to any principle is in its application. Many read books, take home study courses, attend lectures all their lives without ever making any progress in demonstrating the value of the principles involved. The master key suggests methods by which the value of the principles taught may be demonstrated and put in actual practice in the daily experience. There is a change in the thought of the world. This change is silently transpiring in our midst and is more important than any which the world, world has undergone since the downfall of paganism. The present revolution in the opinions of all, all classes of men, the highest and most cultured of men, as well as those of the laboring class, stands unparalleled in the history of the world. Science has of late made such vast discoveries has revealed such an infinity of resources, has unveiled such enormous possibilities that, and such unsuspected forces that scientific men more and more hesitate to affirm certain theories as established and indubitable or to deny certain other theories as absurd or impossible. And so a new civilization is being born. Customs, creeds, and, and cruelty are passing. Vision, faith, and service are taking their place. The fetters of tradition are being melted off from humanity, and as the dross of materialism is being consumed, thought is being liberated and truth is rising full-orbed before an astonished multitude. The whole world is on the eve of a new consciousness, a new power and a new consciousness, a new power and a new realization of the resources within the self. The last century saw the most magnificent material progress in history. The present century will produce the greatest progress in mental and spiritual power. Physical science has resolved matter into molecules, molecules into atoms, atoms into energy, and it has remained for Sir Ambrose Fleming in an address before the Royal Institution to resol resolve this energy into mind. He says, in its ultimate essence, energy may be incomprehensible by us at, at, except as an e exhibition of the direct operation of that which we will call mind or will. Let us see what are the most powerful forces in nature. In the mineral world, everything is solid and fixed. In the animal and vegetable kingdom, it is in a state of flux, forever changing, always being created and recreated. In the atmosphere, we find heat, light, and energy. In e each realm becomes finer and more spiritual as we pass from the visible to the invisible, from the coarse to the fine from the low potentiality to the high potentiality. When we reach the invisible, we find energy in its purest, most volatile state. And as most of the powerful forces of nature and, and the invisible forces, so we find that the most powerful forces of man 
are his invisible forces, his spiritual force. And the only way in which the spiritual force can manifest is through the process of thinking. Thinking is the only activity which the spirit possesses, and thought is the only product of thinking. Addition and subtraction are therefore spiritual transactions. Reasoning is a spiritual process. Ideas are spiritual conceptions. Questions are spiritual searchlights and logic. Logic, argument, and philosophy is spiritual machinery. Every thought brings into action certain physical tissue, parts of the brain, nerve, or muscle. This produces an actual physical change in the construction of the tissue. Therefore, it is only necessary to have a certain number of thoughts on a given subject in order to bring about a complete change in the physical organization of a man. This is the process by which failures change to success. Thoughts of courage, power, inspiration, harmony are substituted for thoughts of failure, despair, lack, limitation, and discord. And as these thoughts take root, the physical tissue is changed and the individ individual sees life in a new light. Old things have actually passed away. All things have become new. He is born again, this time born of the spirit. Life has a new meaning for him. He is reconstructed and filled with joy, confidence, hope, energy. He sees opportunities for success to which he was hitherto blind. He recognizes possibilities which before had no meaning for him. The thoughts of success with which he has been impregnated and radiated are radiated to those around him, and they, in turn, help him onward and upward. He attracts to him new and successful associates, and this, in turn, changes his environment. So that, by the simple exercise of thought, a man changes not only himself, but his environment, circumstances, and conditions. You will see, you must see, that we are at the dawn of a new day that the possibilities are so wonderful, so fascinating, so limitless as to almost to be almost bewildering. A century ago, any man with a Gatling gun could have annihilated a whole army equipped with the implements of warfare then in use. So it is at present. Any man with a knowledge of the possibilities contained in the master key has an inconceivable advantage over the multitude. And that's why I'm sharing it you. So I'll be doing one lesson a week. That's the way uh, Charles Hanel intended this book to be read. So I'll, I'll record the first lesson today.